reflections are, uh, you know, almost a fact of life when it comes to signals on interconnects as a natural behavior that you're always going to see. The challenge with understanding it is, it's one of those effects that is so dependent on what I call the dynamic nature of the signals. In other words, it's the fact that they are propagating. It's that, you know, when you look at a circuit board and you think there's a signal on the line, you think a voltage line, you think the voltage is the same everywhere. And I can, it doesn't matter where I measure it, I'm just going to see it. And at DC, that's the case. And our intuition about you know, circuits and signals, if you gain that intuition with a scope, um, our intuition is all about assuming everything is static. Yeah, everywhere you go, you measure on the board, you're going to get the same voltage. And that is not the case when it, we get into that high speed regime. Uh, and that distinction of, you know, what's high speed and what's not, we relate it to, we refer to it as kind of the electrical length of the interconnects. When the electrical length is short, the, the, the interconnects are electrically short, uh, they behave as though it's static. doesn't matter where I look on the line, I'm going to see the same voltage everywhere. The dynamic nature doesn't really play much of a role. But when they're electrically long, that's when you have to change your intuition to think about signals propagating. And it's really hard to visualize. It's dynamic. You can't look at it with a flat piece of paper that that is just an image. You really need the animation to understand it and to recalibrate your intuition. And so, um, yeah. So when you take when you say electrically long, it means yeah. like we kind of literally see the signal traveling through the track because it's right. long. Yeah, I mean signals will always propagate. You can't stop them. Always propagate, but when the interconnect is electrically short, you don't see the effects of the propagation. Everything is the same. And the, that distinction of electrically long, electrically short is really about how does the time delay, the electrical length of the interconnect, how does that time delay compare with the rise time of the signal? I've got this free tool, this simulator. It is, it's not really a simulator, it's a animator. Um, and, uh, and, and this is a tool that anybody can download. It's completely free. Uh, I can show you where where you can get it. It's a tool that was written by a buddy of mine who's the application engineering manager in uh, for Teledyne LaCroix in Japan. His name is uh, Yoshi Tetsu. And Yoshi is, uh, uh, he did these, I think, like almost 10 years ago. So so here is the, uh, the, the tool. Um, and you can see my mouse moving on your yes, screen here. Okay, excellent. And so here's what it is. This is where we're going to do all the action. Mm -hmm. This is the top view of a transmission line. The yellow is the signal line. The green is the return path underneath it. So they're, you know, kind of microstrip transmission lines. It's, there's the spatial extent of it. In this region, we're going to plot the voltage that we see at any instant of time between the signal and the return. Mm -hmm. And then we have a driver mm -hmm. and we can control, you know, like this, this is a Thevenin and equivalent model. There are only two terms that define it, the voltage and the source impedance, and then the rise time. And we can control those, those three terms over here in this dialog box. And then we have, and, and this is the, the source impedance that, that we're going to be able to change. It's going to drive this transmission line. And then on the other end, we have a load and we can change that load. And now we're going to make uh, uh, an interconnect that is electrically short. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I can change the rise time. Let me make it 500 picoseconds as the rise time. Um, and we'll make a transmission line with a, an electrical length of only 0 0.1 nanoseconds. Mm -hmm. So it's really short compared to that. And so I press enter and, and look, that's on this scale, that's the length of the interconnect. Now, just to make it a little easier, maybe we'll, we'll change it around. Let's make that half a nanosecond, just so it's long enough to see and we'll make the source, we'll make it um, a nanosecond. Okay. And um, so now it's still electrically short. The rise time is twice the time delay for this interconnect. And, um, uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to send that signal in and we're going to look at the voltage on that transmission line, uh, everywhere on that transmission line plotted up here. Um, as that signal turns on. And it doesn't really matter what the source and, and the load is, but you know, let's make it a little bit larger so we can see it. I'll make it two volts. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, okay, and now let's run. And what? And you know, I always tell my students before you push the run button, always anticipate what you expect. This is rule number nine. And so we've got this long rising edge that's going to be turning on slow compared to the time delay. And so you know, we we shouldn't we should see you know may, most of the line about the same. You know, we'll see a little bit of the sl a little bit of the slope there, but mostly the same voltage. So let's see if that. So we see. So we're going to turn it on and watch. And so. Here is that voltage going up. And yeah, there's, you know, if, if you blinked, you missed it. So let's, let's do it again. So there, there it goes, we'll do it again. We see the whole voltage line going up. And if we made that line shorter, electrically shorter, because it was only like 50% now, but let's, let's go make that line even shorter. I don't know if I can make the rise time longer. Let's see, let's make it. Um, 10,000, put that 10,000, okay. Yeah. Or here's uh, 3, 000, we'll make it okay. five five thousand okay. one two three. Okay, and now so it's the rise time is ten times the time delay. So so now we're just going to see the whole line go up at the same time, right? And so here it is. And so you can see the voltage mm -hmm. of the line going up, but every point is the same. So it's electrically every point stays the same. We don't see that dynamic nature. We see the behavior, even though that signal is propagating down there. Because this rise time is so long compared to the time delay, every point in that line is increasing at the at the same time. Doesn't matter where we measure across here, we're going to see the same thing. All those reflections are happening during that rise. We would never see them. And in fact, if I turn on some reflections, so we'll we'll get to the 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 issue later. But I'm going to make this um, uh, high high resistance on the load. I'm going to make this low resistance. In so this source. is like a classic uh, end gate, for example. Yeah. So we're going to drive a low impedance you know, CMOS driver on the line. Uh, we're going to have an open at the end, and we're going to do the same. We're going to look at the signals um, on every point along the line, mm -hmm. but we're going to have reflections now. So let's watch and see the impact. But it's electrically short. Mm -hmm. So here it is. It heads back. Now you can see that the voltage on that line is just continuing to go up. It's just this linear slope here. It's just increasing. All those reflections are happening, but they're happening, you know, while the signal is rising up and they're all smeared out and we don't see the, the impact of the reflections. So this is what we're used to thinking of. This is where our intuition is for electrically short interconnects. This is what we learn in, in high school. This is how we think about when we look at the signals on a line, you probe with a scope and you measure the voltage the same everywhere along that line. And that's that kind of that behavior. These reflections are happening, but we just don't see them. Yeah. Okay. I would like to say, uh, basically what we are looking at, it can be, as I said, like standard end gate, because I think they have like three to nine nanoseconds uh, rising gauge. So we are testing five nanoseconds and uh, the track length is 0 0.5 nanosecond. So if we put it into dimensions, it is what? How, how long? What do you think? So it's roughly about six inches per nanosecond. So and it's, it's half a nanosecond, be, okay. so it's three inches. Three inches. Yeah, so yeah. three inches it is. So this is. I don't uh, know how many centimeters. I will put. I will oh, put. three inches is about uh, eight centimeters. Eight centimeters. Like so yeah, it's like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know what? I I have a board here that is almost exactly that. Uh, maybe I don't have my board here. I mean, this is this is almost exactly the same as one of the boards I do for my students. Uh, we do in our class. But here, here's a board. This is a a little microcontroller board, mm -hmm. three inches, uh, and it's got um, the, so the, a lot of the the drivers on this is a ten year old chip. Um, a, a lot of the drivers for the microcontrollers are you know, three to five nanoseconds. In fact, you know, eight, eight to ten nanoseconds in some cases. So that's basically this example here mm -hmm. uh, for for this board, um, and uh, and that and that's kind of the typical board that we're used to thinking about when we look at a board uh, where the rise time is long compared to the electrical length. So the that's the reason why before we didn't really had any kind of special problems, even if designs were not perfect because it was so slow that we couldn't really see this kind of reflection problems right. or something. And when I, when we talk about you couldn't see any problems, specifically 
reflections and transmission lines mm -hmm. because there are other problems that we absolutely do see with boards with traces that short and rise times that long mm -hmm. different set of problems okay um, but reflection noise we didn't we're not used to seeing and we're not used to thinking about because the interconnects are electrically long mm -hmm. but when we um, start talking for example about ddr for memories or something then yeah. suddenly the rise time is much higher i don't know exactly what but right. it's yeah it's typically like 0.3 nanoseconds and so we'll, we'll look at that one next and so but now when we make it electrically long now it's really the dynamic nature of the signals we have to pay attention to so let's make the interconnect a little longer just so we can see it so we mm -hmm. still have one part we're going to make it uh let's make it two nanoseconds long mm -hmm. so here it is two nanoseconds so long. it's 12 inches or like yeah 12 inches longer. right and i just made it 12 inches because or two nanoseconds because on this screen i want it to be long enough we can see some mm -hmm. detail and it's scaled for you know fixed fixed kind of length and now let's make the rise time a little shorter mm -hmm. so we'll go to uh 300 picoseconds that's the ddr four mm -hmm. three three and four kind of kind of rise time and um and for now let me make it no reflections so we'll turn reflections off we'll do that by matching the impedances at the source and the load and we'll talk about that in a minute and now we're going to launch that signal into the transmission line and now it is electrically short compared to the time delay of the integrator and so we're going to see that signal as it propagates mm -hmm. and we'll see the dynamic nature so here we're going to turn it on we're going to launch that signal at the beginning and look there's that edge as it's propagating down the line it is dynamically we can see it moving it's going to probe that interconnect along the way so and, and this, this is kind of ideal connection because this is how we would imagine traveling the signal if if there is there are no reflections for example right and i use that term ideal everything in this simulator and everything in a simulator is always ideal in other words the behavior is exactly the way it is based on the properties of the structures that we design not on the real world but on the models and so everything in a simulator environment environment is ideal it's up to us when we build the circuit to try to add some of the effects that we'll see in the real world okay um, but so... it's always simulation is always ideal by definition because every structure is mathematically defined in an ideal world but here is a, a really well designed interconnect this emulates a well designer this is a we get really good source impedance match and we get really good far end impedance match we get uniform line and so all we're going to see is that signal once it's launched into the transmitter it's going to propagate and here's that edge propagating every step along the way it sees the same instantaneous impedance on that uniform transmission line okay and, and on the bottom i think we should explain what's see on the bottom pictures yeah so this is what we would see if we looked with our scope at the transmitter mm -hmm. that's the transmitter side this is what we would see over here and if we if we put our scope over here this is what we would see at the receiver side mm -hmm. and and you can see that here it is launched so let's let's watch it again here when it when it launches i'll, I'll restart it here when it when it launches we see it turn on initially because mm -hmm. it came right out of here but we don't see anything mm -hmm. over ah, now we see it because it when takes it that okay. few nanoseconds to to reach it to the to the far end and so and and there are no so the the most important principle or the two important principles about reflections the first is signals are dynamic they are propagating there's a direction of propagation and the second is signals see an instantaneous impedance as they propagate and when it's a uniform transmission line the instantaneous impedance it or the characteristic impedance of a transmission line is a measure of the instantaneous impedance the signal sees that that name characteristic impedance comes from the fact that if this is a uniform transmission line every step along the way that signal that dynamic signal that's propagating from along the line every step of the way that signal sees the same instantaneous impedance there's one value of instantaneous impedance that characterizes that transmission line and this and impedance is given by the uh, for example track width the distance from the ground plane properties of the materials and normally exactly in PCBs we design these transmission lines 50 ohms 
or whatever the specification okay, is for the for interconnect. Okay, specific interface. It's, and that's what we mean by controlled impedances. We're controlling that instantaneous impedance by keeping the cross-section constant. Yeah, I would like yeah, to point okay, out fair. 50 ohm impedance is not 50 ohm resistance because some people, they don't, yes. they kind of uh, get lost in this. And you know, you're absolutely right. And part of the confusion in our industry is we use, we, we get lazy in the in the names we use for the uh, for the effects, and we use that term impedance uh, t uh, uh, too often without specifying which kind of impedance are we talking about. And unfortunately, there are like five different impedances, and if we don't specify the preface of which type of impedance, it's really confusing which one is it. And this is we we talked about instantaneous impedance. The impedance the signal sees that's not the same as the resistance of the line and it's also not the same as the input impedance and it's also not the same as the frequency the impedance in the frequency domain all of these are different and they all refer to different things and we have to be very careful which impedance we talk about and it's different from characteristic impedance um, and so the signal as it propagates when we watch it propagating on that interconnect. This signal, this edge, sees the instantaneous impedance. Very specialized kind of behavior. So yeah, let's have a look like uh, on buffer example. We have a buffer uh, or the end gate with uh, low impedance output. Usually I think it's like you say like 10 ohms or something. Yeah, so let's make the receiver high impedance. So that's what is normally source. on gates. Uh, usually the input is very high impedance. Right, so this is the input gate of a CMOS uh, receiver, mm -hmm. high impedance. Uh, so we'll make that high impedance and we'll make the source impedance 10 ohms. But we'll still keep the transmission line 50 ohms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll get something going on at the launch here. And so not all, because the signal when it launches in the, it sees 50 ohms. Mm -hmm. That's the instantaneous impedance. It looks like a resistor. And so we get a voltage divider. We get 10 ohms into 50 ohms. So we get a fraction of this voltage here. What, five sixths of that voltage launched into the line. That's what propagates. It sees that constant impedance, nothing, nothing, no, no change, no change, no change. Suddenly it sees a high impedance and that's when we get a reflection. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna head back and it's going to see 50, 50, 50, 50, and now it's going to see a low impedance. Now the sign changes again another, and it's going to bounce back and forth. And just to uh, watch that dynamically, we got it two, two nanoseconds long. Let's let's watch that dynamically. So we, we know we're going to see the signal launch propagating mm -hmm. along. That's great. That's great. It sees a high impedance. It's going to reflect. Uh oh, we get a reflection heading back. Now we get another reflection heading. That's negative. That negative change comes back over here. We get a uh, that negative change reflects again, hits here, change of sign, reflects. Oh my gosh, it's bouncing all around. And here's what we would see at the receiver. We see the high and low, high and low, high and low, high and low. So why and is the, it reflecting? Why does it reflect? Okay, how come when we went from 50 ohms to a high impedance, why did we get a reflection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, I have two, uh, three answers. The first answer is a very flippant answer, is to prevent the universe from exploding. <laughs> if there weren't a reflection, then the universe would blow up. Um, so that's the flippant answer. The the um, the, the the other answer, uh, the the twenty second answer is, it does it in order to um, uh, 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 match two important boundary conditions, two important conditions that electric fields and currents have to, uh, or voltages and currents have to, um, uh, uh, have, to have to describe. If, if they didn't behave this way, the universe would blow up. And, and the third explanation is a little bit more involved. It's really about, in order to match these boundary conditions on the ends, when you calculate, okay, what's the voltage on both sides? What's the current going in, coming out? Um, when you solve for that, that's where you see, oh, there has to be a reflection to balance those behaviors. And that's a little bit of involved calculation. I'll show you two places where you can get that. One is um, I wrote a textbook with Artec on um, uh, 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 kind of 
designing transmission. Actually, I have a couple textbooks where I go through this. I have a textbook with uh, Prentice Hall on signal and power integrity simplified. And in the chapter on reflections, we go in, in detail walking through how to think about reflections at the boundary and where that reflection coefficient and reflected signal comes from. And then the last book I did on with Artec on uh, uh, transmission line fundamentals, transmission lines 101, characterizing, designing, measuring. Um, I have a whole chapter on why are there reflections and how do they arise? And I actually have a video embedded there that walks through the calculation. Okay, so but if someone we, doesn't understand yeah. why the reflection is happening, what we can say? Like, we can say when the impedance is very high, then reflection is going to be uh, double of the voltage or? Don't think double. Okay. And here's here's where the dynamic nature is so important. When we think, when, when we have these kinds of systems where we have, where we can, where the dynamic nature is important, electrically long systems, and we can think about these signals propagating, we have to now separate in our head two different kind of things that we look at in the in the interconnect. There is the signal that propagates. See this mm -hmm. guy, this is that signal that's propagating. And then there is the voltage that we would measure if we stuck our scope probe mm -hmm. on the trace. They are two different things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I worked for a scope company for 12 years and I'm still a fellow at Teldine LaCroix. So, you know, I, I still am closely connected with a, an oscilloscope company. And so I mean this only in the most loving way, but if you learn signal integrity by looking at an oscilloscope trace, a measurement, you'll have screwed up intuition because a scope only tells you the voltage that you see at a, at a node. Mm -hmm. It tells you nothing about the dynamic nature. Mm -hmm. and, and look at this. This is the voltage that we saw at the receiver here. We saw it go high. We saw it go low. We would think, oh, we have ringing noise here. What's causing it? Oh, the whole line is ringing somewhere. That's not what causes this. This is caused by the dynamic nature of the signal bouncing back and forth. And look at this signal. As this signal, here's that edge that's propagating. That edge is what's propagating. That's not doubling or halving. It's changing its amplitude. It's the signal that the voltage that we would measure on a scope trace. That's what doubled or mm -hmm. changed based on the reflection. So we really want to be thinking about the reflected signal and the voltage that we would measure. Let's take that example that we just started with here. Here's the example. We have a 50 ohm line over here and and we have an open effectively over here. And we're gonna send that one, well, yeah, about a one volt signal down this transmission line. Let's watch it. And two then volts. I'm gonna see if I can- Maybe we have two volts. Well, not all of it gets launched, launched in there, but, um, but let's just let's pretend it's one volt, easy okay. to calculate. So here it is. Here's that one volt signal going to the transmission line, right? Now, before it hits, I see a one volt signal propagating this way. Okay. When it hits, it's going to go from 50 ohms to basically an open, mm -hmm. really high impedance. What is, how much is going to reflect? And there's a different answer between how much is going to reflect and what am I going to measure here with my scope probe? How much reflects? So one volt goes in, how much reflects? How much of that one volt reflects no, from a, everything will open. go blind. everything right yeah. so so it's a hundred it's like hitting a wall or something and then it just goes back it's like hitting a wall everything reflects so one volt goes in so one volt is going to reflect mm -hmm. so the signal that i see reflecting is going to be a one volt signal mm -hmm. okay i understand but the voltage that i measure here with my scope probe I'm going to see two waves. I'm going to see two signals. I'm going to see that incident one volt signal, and I'm going to see a reflected one volt signal. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to see two signals with my scope probe. I'm going to see two volts. So let's let's continue that. So it hits the wall, reflects. Mm -hmm. And so my reflected signal that's probably in this way is still a one volt signal. Mm -hmm. It's built on the top of the signal which was traveling there. If I were to measure with my scope probe, at any point here, like right here, I would just measure the one volt incident signal. Mm -hmm. But if I looked over here after that signal has reflected, or if I look over here at the receiver, at that one volt signal that reflects, I would measure two signals, the incident signal and the reflected signal. I would measure the sum of those two, two volts. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the difference between the dynamic nature of the signal propagating and the voltage that I measure with my scope probe. Because my scope, my scope can't, and I, I, I work for a scope, I'm a fellow at a scope company. I, I only mean in the most loving way, but my scope can't tell that I have two signals there. Mm -hmm. All it can measure is the voltage. And it only, all, I have to use my engineer's mind's eye, my, intu my engineering intuition to understand, oh, that voltage that I see here, that's due to two waves, an incident and a reflected, and that's why I see two volts. But I can't measure that with my scope probe. Okay. I have to use this kind of a simulation to help me see under the hood what's going on. So why it will, by the end, it will just go a little bit down and down and down and down and then it will just right. it will be stable. So let me, um, you know, given how long this is, uh, we don't have enough time to see it settle down. So let me make it a little shorter so we can see the all the reflections die out and get me a steady state. So I'll make it one nanosecond and, um, and now we're going to watch those reflections happen. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've got the signal launched. We get a reflection. Most of it reflects, heads back. Now it reflects again, And but it was a negative. Here it reflects again. It's going back and forth. And so we see every time it hits here, so we didn't talk about that part. When we go from a 50 ohms to an open, it was a everything reflects, mm -hmm. reflection coefficient of one. But when that reflected signal, let's watch it here. When that reflected signal, hits the the low impedance we go from 50 ohms to low impedance it's 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 the sign of the reflection is negative and let's let's look at it this side so we can see it a little bit better so i'm going to make the load 10 ohms and and we're going to watch that signal hitting the low impedance over on this side mm -hmm. so we can see it and so we're going to send a one volt signal going in and the voltage that reflects is going to be well, it's not going to be, well, actually, you know what? Let's make this load zero. Now, we got a really low impedance, mm -hmm. right? What's the reflection coefficient when we go from any impedance to zero ohms? What do you think that reflection coefficient is? Everything. Everything's going to reflect, but it's going to be negative. Yeah. It's minus one. So one volt goes in, minus one volt's going to reflect. Let's see if we can simulate that. So here's our one volt going in, and here's our, up, up, up. I didn't stop it fast enough. There's our minus one volt reflecting. Let's try to do that again. And I'll try to stop it to see it. So here's our one volt going in. Mm -hmm. Here's mm -hmm. our minus one volt propagating. So here's the, the leading edge and here it is dropping and it's minus one volt that's propagating, that reflects. And so over here, where I had my zero ohms, when I put my scope probe over here, what am I gonna measure? Well. I'm going to measure one volt going in and I'm going to measure minus one volt reflecting what's the net voltage that I see. One volt zero. and minus I zero because after all zero ohms, it's a short. And what's the voltage I'm going to see across a short? Of course, it's going to be zero ohms, but we get there dynamically. We get there by having one volt going in and one volt reflecting and everywhere along the line. Hey, I got a short over here. everywhere along that line. I'm going to see zero, zero ohms. So that's what happens when I go from high impedance to low. I get a negative voltage reflecting. So let's go back to the case that we had. I had a really high impedance at the load. And uh, and now we're going to launch that signal. We get most of the signal launched. We get it all reflecting positive. It comes as we get a negative reflection, heads back. That negative voltage reflects all of it. Negative reflects, heads back negative voltage going into a low impedance, it changes sign reflection and it becomes positive and heads back. So we get a positive voltage, hits here, reflects, heads back, reflects here, we get a negative voltage and that gives us the ups and the downs. Let's watch that dynamically. So and here's it goes that lower and lower and lower because the smaller and smaller because the impedance change. on one side is not really uh, minus infinity one. It's and minus on point. the other one is not really zero. Well, it's not really, it's one here, but it's not really minus one when it comes on yeah, this okay, side I understand. here. It's minus 0.7 okay. or something. And, but you can see the amplitude is decreasing. And if I wait long enough, those reflections, they all die out because this is not minus one. This is uh, point, point 0.7. And every time it reflects, I get a 0.7 reduction. Mm -hmm. And so we get that steady state.
if we wait long enough. And that's, and you can only think of that because of the dynamic nature of the signals reflecting back and forth. Okay, and, and the frequency really, of really this valuable. is basically related to the length of the track. Right, this time delay here, so it goes down, I see it, that's where I see it arriving. It has to go down and back for me to see a change. So this is a round trip time. And then this is another round trip time. And so going down, back, down, back, that's that's two round trip times. So the time between the peaks, two round trip times, four time mm -hmm. delays. And that's what's related to the ringing frequency is four time delays. And if I make that interconnect really short, so it's one nanosecond, let me make it 0.3 nanoseconds. Now it's equal to the rise time. Well, it's not, you know, short here, but now those reflections are still going to happen, but they're kind of smeared out within the rise time. And so I, I don't see them very well in the rise time. Mm -hmm. And as I make that electrical length shorter and shorter, they get more and more smeared out and I don't see them. So now I'll make it 0.3, I'm sorry, 0.2 uh, uh, nanoseconds. And let's watch those, the, the dynamic nature is still happening. We're still getting the reflections back and forth, but it's smeared out of that rising edge and look, the amplitude has dropped. And if I, if I go and make it 0.1 nanosecond, now I'm starting to get electrically short mm -hmm. because it's short compared to the rise time. Look, I hardly see those reflections mm -hmm. anymore. They're always happening. It's just when it's electrically short, they get smeared out. So now the question and is, what if we need to have a long track? So how we are going to get rid of these reflections? Okay. So now comes the, uh-oh, if we're electrically long, we'll go back to our two nanoseconds. If we're electrically long and I have a low impedance driver, how do we eliminate the reflections? And always when we have a problem, we always want to ask what is the root cause of the problem? And that's always the source of how we fix it. And the root cause of these reflections, it's not so much we have a reflection, but we have multiple reflections. Mm -hmm. We have two reflections because that signal propagating, a reflection causes that signal, some of it to change direction and go back to the source. But I don't care about the source. I care about what I see at the receiver. Mm -hmm. That's all I care about. And if I have just one reflection, then if it never gets back here to the source, who cares? I don't care about it. I just care what the, so that means I have to have two reflections to be a, a problem. Mm -hmm. And so I want to eng and what is it? And so that says, I want to minimize the reflections. And how do I do that? Well, what is the fundamental cause of the reflections? And the fundamental root cause of reflections is a change in the instantaneous impedance. So it's the and difference so between like, it's 50 on 50 on 50 on and suddenly there is nothing or suddenly there is short. That's what makes the some reflection. change. Right. And it doesn't matter. It could be a high impedance, a low impedance, some change. And of course, the magnitude of how much reflects depends on the difference in impedance. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the root cause, it's caused by a change in that instant. That's where that dynamic nature and that instantaneous impedance concept is so important. If it's caused by a change in the instantaneous impedance signal sees, then it says the way you, you fix that problem is you don't change the instantaneous impedance. We need to fake the signal into seeing no change in the instantaneous impedance. And one first thing you do is that's why we use controlled impedance. We don't want to see a change along the way. The second way is there is absolutely guaranteed to be always two places where there's going to be a change in impedance one at the launch mm -hmm. and one at the receiver. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the receiver. So here I see 50, 50, 50, all receivers, they're, op they're high impedance. And so I see a change here. What can I do over here to fake the signal into not seeing a change in the instantaneous impedance? We would like to have see, that 50 ohm impedance. I want 50 ohms. And now comes that, well, what's the instantaneous impedance of a resistor? If I step on a resistor between the signal and the return, connect a resistor between signal and return. If I step on a resistor here, what's the instantaneous impedance I see of the resistor? Resistor is? value. It's the resistor. It's the resistance. Yeah. And so if I stick a resistor here of 50 ohms, so I'm going to make my load here 50 ohms. 
now signal sees 50 50 50 50 50 50 50 50 50 50 50 oh no change in impedance no reflection so let's watch that so here's that signal oops here's that signal propagating 50 50 50 50 50 up oh, no change in impedance no reflection done problems fixed eliminated in in memories for example there are 50 ohm termination resistors and in a lot of other circuits i'm not saying this is the only way or do this all the time this is one solution now but wait a minute doesn't that decrease the signal not the signal that's launched in the transmit once it's launched into that line it sees 50 50 50 50 50 50 no change but now what is that signal launched into the transmission line well i used a low impedance driver and i said it was one ohm or you know i said a two volt signal with 10 ohm impedance 10 ohm source impedance we got a pretty hefty we got five six of that voltage launched in that line suppose that my source resistance was higher suppose that it was uh the source was 100 ohms you know really old crappy um uh, uh, a driver that had uh, you know low low current strength, high impedance. Now I've created a voltage divider. I have a two ohm source with a hundred. Let me make that hundred ohms. Two ohm source with a hundred ohms. Source. A, a two volt source with a hundred ohms, but it's going to drive a fifty ohm load. It sees fifty ohms here when it launches. So I have a voltage drive. So the voltage here is. 50 divided by 150, mm -hmm. it's not going to be 2 volts. It's going to be a third of 2 volts launched into that line. Let's watch that. So here's that smaller voltage launched into that line. It all propagates. I see it here, but I get less voltage mm -hmm. launched in that line. I think the and bottom make... graphs also show it's lower because I think the gray, yeah. gray uh, well, tracks are the, the... These are the same. I mean, the Whatever. gray tracks oh. is not the uh, target voltage. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that there. Let's let's see that. I, you know, I never noticed that. Let's uh, let's go back to make it a little bit bigger. Voltage launch. It always goes close to the uh, gray line. Here? No, no, down, oh, no. down. There. Oh, the grid. Yeah. The grid here. Oh, I saw. It. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. Measured on the grid here. Um, in fact, you know what? Let's do this. I think let's that's two this... volts. I think you're right. Let's make this zero, so I know. I'm going to get two volts launched into the line, right? So let's let's see if you're right. Yeah, you're right. That's the two volt line. That's the reference line for two volts. Okay, very good. Okay, so once it's launched in that line, that's the voltage we're going to see we see at the receiver. So now let's make the. In fact, let's do this. This is a 50 ohm. Line. If we make the source 50 ohms, what's going to be the voltage? Oops, I'm going to do it over here. Half. What's? It's going to be half because I made a voltage divider. It's 50 ohms here, 50 ohms here. I'm going to half that voltage launched in that line. So let's see that initial, voltage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The right. initial voltage. And there it is. Half that voltage launched in the line. But once it's launched, whatever it is, it's going to prop it. It's going to be 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. No change, no reflection. We see the 50 ohms. And so it's whatever voltage gets launched, that's what we see. But as we change the source impedance of the driver, Depending on what the transmission line's input impedance, the characteristic impedance line is, that's going to determine how much of that volt voltage is launched in the line. And if it's a really bad driver, um, sorry, do it over here. If it's a really bad driver, and that's 100 ohms, then I get a smaller fraction of the voltage launched in the line. There it is, the third of the voltage launched in that line, but I see the whole thing over here. So this is how we prevent reflections, one way. It's called far end termination. Uh, but it also we... drives a lot of current, I guess, 50 ohms. Hey, welcome to the real world. Yeah, you're right. And so that's why it's one way of doing it. Another way is source termination. Mm -hmm. So let me make my load really high. So I'm going to go back, make that really So this high. is like standard input, high impedance yeah, input. Without doing anything. So I'm still yeah. going to have a reflection there, but that when that signal reflects, it's going to propagate down. And now let me manage the reflection from this side. Let me manage it at the source. So I want the source impedance to be 50, 50 ohms. ohms. So now when that signal reflects, 
it sees 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, no reflection. And we can do this, for example, if we know our driver or our output is 10 ohms, we just add 40 ohm resistor. There you go. And we will have 50 ohms. But we get half the voltage launched into the transmission line because we have a voltage divider. But I don't care because I get that half that voltage reflecting, it heads back, it gets terminated. And so what do I see at the transmitter? Mm -hmm. I see an incident signal of one volt plus a reflected signal of one volt. I see mm -hmm. two volts. Wow. And, and that's how we get it. So on that note, let me leave you with one last comment. And that is anybody can download this tool and I'm going to show you where to get it. So I'm going to bring up my browser. This is also important to say like, when you measure these kind of signals, you really would like to measure it where the receiver is. Yeah. You want to see where the receiver is, right? So so if anybody wants to get this tool and download and play with this completely free, you go to the Teledon LaCroix Signal Integrity Academy and you just do a search here for let's see TDR, TDR animation. And uh and uh let me see I gotta move my thing out of the way here. We do a search, TDR animation, and um let's see, and here it is. So, you know, this is, I do a, you know, bunch of videos here, uh, but, but here is the Yoshi's animation. You click on that link and here it is. This is all completely free. There's a little video I did that shows you, walks you through how to use the mm -hmm. tool. And you come down here and you click this and you download it and it's an executable. Okay. And, and everyone this. can experiment with this uh, reflection. Everybody can experiment with it. This little video here will walk you through how to uh, use it just like we did here. Um, and we'll, you know, maybe another time we talk about reflections, we'll use it again. Uh, it's a great little tool to, uh, to, uh, to play with and, and understand and kind of gain intuition about the dynamic nature of signals and how the dynamic nature and that change in instantaneous impedance causes reflections and what we can do about it. Thank you so much, Eric. I'm sorry for keeping you so long. You only have hey, three minutes. Always, always a pleasure. And I uh, look forward to chatting the next time on, a, on another exciting topic in signal integrity. Thank you so much, Eric. Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. And uh, that's everything. Thank you very much for watching this video. By the way, we are preparing some very interesting tutorials. So if you don't want to miss them, hit the subscribe button. If you want, you can also check out our Federal Online courses where you will find everything important from basic board design up to advanced hardware design and PCB layout. The link is in the description. That's all for this video. Thank you again. Don't forget to leave your comments and see you next time. Bye.